iOS 17 is actually a pretty big update this year. So in this video, I wanna give you my top five favorite features of iOS 17. And so we're gonna start with one that I think Google has kind of had for a little bit and it does behave slightly different, but uh, it's all kind of the same thing and that's call screening. And in this case, Apple calls it live voicemail. So what it is, is uh, you'll get a phone call and if you let it go to voicemail or if you kind of hit the end call button and send them right to voicemail, uh, it'll basically pick back up and after the message goes through, you know, the whole, this person's not available, blah, blah, blah. You'll like kind of hear a beep on your end. And then that means the person's starting to leave a message. And in real time, you'll see the transcription come through. And what this does is basically gives you the ability to like read the message and decide whether or not you want to pick up the phone and you can pick up the phone in this little demo that I'm showing you right now, halfway through the call, I decided, Hey, I want to talk to my coworker, Julie. So I hit accept and I was able to talk to her. It didn't send her to voicemail and the call wasn't lost forever and I didn't need to call them back. And so that's a really, really cool tool to have because let's face it, we get a bunch of robo calls these days, a lot of spam calls, calls that just don't need your attention. But sometimes you get a call from a number and yeah, it's important. Maybe it's a doctor's office and they're calling a reschedule and you wanna pick that up so you don't have to call them back later. You can do that with live voicemail, see who's calling, pick it up, or continue to let them leave a message. The next feature that really picked up a lot of steam like a few days to a week before WWDC is standby. And basically what it does is if you put your phone on a charger and specifically like a charging stand, um, it doesn't have to be on a charging stand, but this would help you out in this feature because it's going to be kind of weird if you charge it and then turn your phone, then you'd have to hold it the whole time. So basically the desk stand that I have here, shout out Nomad. This is a fantastic charger. I'll leave it linked in the description down below, but I place it up. It's max safe charging. I turn it horizontally and all of a sudden you're in standby mode. And what this gives you is a bunch of different widgets and information at a glance. So you can customize all of this. You can add widgets for the left side, widgets for the right side. This is kind of the main view that you get here. And so obviously your clock or anything can go on the left, but in this case, it's kind of default to like a bunch of different clock styles. And then on the right is a bunch of different widgets. So we have calendar, reminders, music. This is all limited to Apple's stuff right now, but I'm guessing that once developers can, you know, get into iOS 17 and start developing for some of these new features, then that's going to change. And it's a really cool underrated feature in my opinion. And um, yeah, so this is kind of the first view and then you can swipe over to another view, which is your pictures. And if you launch press and hold for more options. There are more like events or memories. I believe there was like nature and cities and like personal stuff, uh, like personal photos to you and memories and all that people. Um, and then if you swipe one more time, there's kind of like a, just a standard clock, but you can scroll through the different types of clock styles if you want to. So I'm really enjoying this feature. Uh, live activities can also be displayed in this view. If you're listening to music, you get that nice full screen mode here horizontally. And honestly, really cool. Can't wait to see what developers do with it. The next one is something I've been clamoring for for so long, and that's interactive widgets. We finally have it. Um, so basically, if you are familiar with widgets, now you can interact with them. And by that, I mean like you have the home widget. It's not just something that's gonna take you to your room. You can actually turn on and off devices and interact with the widget so that you don't need to open up the app. Um, if you have a car, you can do some certain car functions that it takes advantage of. Uh, if you have, you know, notes up or less for this case, reminders, you can check off reminders. So you don't need to open the reminders app. There's a bunch of different things that developers will definitely be able to do with their interactive widgets. But uh, so far, I'm super excited that this made its way across not only iOS 17, but iPad OS 17. And for those of you who do not know, Mac OS now has widgets that are on your desktop and those are also interactive as well. Next up, we have the keyboard updates. More importantly, the autocorrect and also the inline prediction text feature has been significantly improved. And I know what you're thinking, how could this be a big update with keyboard being one of your top five features? Well, the keyboard for iOS, in my opinion, has been kind of a mess. And uh, we've all heard the joke, the ducking joke in that, you know, some words just need to be autocorrected. 
And uh, when you're trying to say a certain expletive and you get ducking as the auto, that's not going to happen anymore. Now it'll actually pick up on your profanity and also just other things that you might say. You can make it learn uh, and be smart and adapt to the way you speak. And also the predictive text is so much better. It's not only correcting just words, but it's also correcting entire sentences and finishing those sentences for you. And so, yeah, I am a huge fan of this new keyboard. And last but not least, we have FaceTime on Apple TV. Yeah, that's right. You can use your iPhone and connect it to your TV. So you'll need iOS 17 and tvOS 17. Uh, but your iPhone will use continuity camera with your Apple TV and act as your FaceTime camera. You'll have all of the usual FaceTime features, uh, things like center stage and all of the FaceTime effects. And it's just a perfect way to interact with people, uh, especially if your whole family maybe wants to FaceTime some relatives and you have a lot of people that are sitting on your couch and you guys all want to be part of the call. Well, this is a great way of just putting it up by your TV and, uh, you know, having a FaceTime call and seeing more uh, of the person that you're speaking to because now you have it on your giant TV. So yeah, those are my top five favorite features. Uh, I do have one honorable mention and that's the journal app. It's not quite available right now. Um, so I don't really have a whole lot to say, but yeah, basically Apple's giving you the ability to jot down memories. It's a lot like the day one app, but you know, more of the Apple ecosystem is involved and it just works seamlessly with, you know, some of the other things on your iPhone. And yeah, I think it's going to be a really cool way for people to kind of track their daily activities and memories and things that they've been doing so they can keep a journal on your iPhone. And privacy is a huge key thing here. And Apple has reassured us all that it still takes privacy seriously. And so that's it. That was our top five features. Of course, we're going to do more videos on iOS 17 in the future. If there's a feature that you really want me to include, please let me know in the comments down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.